Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. This lecture will be also very useful to fourth year students and also to the doctors who are practicing and who will do a private practice. While reading a ECG, this particular chapter will be very, very important. That is placement of the lid while taking an ECG. So in this lecture, we'll be discussing on how you place the lid and what can happen if the lids are not placed properly and in which condition you take an extra lids or other than normal ECG tracing. While taking a normal ECG, we always place the lids, which we call limb lids, augmented lids, and chest lids. Totally, it becomes 12 lids, but sometimes you do have an option, and depending upon the condition, you do those particular things. All the material, whatever I have gathered, is from YouTube, from Google, from slideshare.com, as well as others sites on internet. So, we'll be discussing on lid placement while taking an ECG. So, lid placement in an ECG, mainly we have got what we call as limb lids, that is lid 1, lid 2, lid 3. Augmented lid that is AVF, AVL and AVR which are by placing electrodes or we call lids on right arm, left arm, right foot and left foot where the difference between right arm and left arm is lid 1 between right arm and left lower limb is lid 2 left arm and left lower limb is lid 3 and augmented lid is right foot left foot is AVF left arm is AVL and right arm is AVR so we will be mentioning some of the normal lid placements then what are the different types of 12 lid ECGs 15 lid 5 lids, 3 lids, Levis, and then we have got Fontaine lids, esophageal lids, and then in a separate lecture we will be discussing on lid reversal and abnormal placements. So the more you see in an ECG, more you will learn, and if you listen to someone, you will always learn more. So we always say audio-visual is the best method of learning and you will know more and more while taking an ECG there are certain things which we always follow that is quiet room person should be well relaxed there should be no electrical disturbances in that room room should be fully illuminated warm environment should be good person should have empty bladder and first and foremost your machine should be good by and large, nowadays, all machines, all ECG recorders are automatic. You can have a single lead recorder, multi-lead recorder, meaning three lead recorder at a time, or 12 lead recorder at a time. And with that, you've got 10 leads cable. The five lead cables era is gone. Now there are some ECG machine which are cordless and by that cordless ECG machine also you can take an ECG while taking an ECG proper attachment should be done and you should take a complete ECG record which should include all the 12 leads that is lead 1, lead 2, lead 3 AVR, AVL, AVF and V1 to V6 and in each lead you should have minimum 3 complex and after finishing the 12 lid simultaneously either simultaneously or along with that you should have a rhythm strip which should be for minimum 10 seconds 
So rhythm strip is either lit to or V2, depending upon which is showing you a better complexes. So that makes 12 lead ECG. Now apart from this 12 lead ECG, there are some ECG which we take what we call is a 15 lead ECG. And this 15 lead ECG is taken whenever we are suspecting right ventricle MI or we call RVMI. And this we suspect whenever we start getting changes in V1. And if we suspect a person who is having an inferior wall changes that is in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF along with that. If there is an ST elevation in V1 and V2, we do suspect RVMI and in that case, we should take V3R, V4R, V5R and V6R. By and large, V4, V5 and V6R are taken. So that will give you a much better idea regarding RVMI. And in case of a posterior wall MI, whenever we see V1, V2 or V3, we got prominent R wave. R wave is taller than S wave. ST depression, which is a horizontal depression. And T wave is upright. And the lead where you see such changes usually in V1, V2, may be seen in V3. And if there are no changes in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF, we usually suspect true posterior MI. And if it is with ST elevation in inferior wall that is lead 2, lead 3 AVF, and then if we demonstrate in a lead which we call as V7, V8 and V9, then we label that as inferior posterior if it is there with lit 2, lit 3 AVF or if it is not seen in lit 2, lit 3 and AVF, it is purely seen in V1, V2 and V3 and we see an ST elevation in V7, V8 and V9, we label that as a true posterior MI and these are the two conditions where we take 15 lead ECG. Because 12 leads are taken plus we take an extra lead. In RVMI we take V4, V5, V6, R. And in a case of a true posterior MI we take along with 12 lead ECG. We take V7, V8 and V9. So these are called 15 lead ECGs. Particularly in case of a high lateral wall MI. Whenever we suspect a high lateral wall MI. Particularly if we get an ST elevation in lead 1 and AVL. We suspect a high lateral wall MI. In that, we put the lids, that is the chest lids, one space higher. That is, instead of the fourth space, we put it in the third space. And then we take that. Also, in case of a Brugada, if in V1, V2, we do not have a classical changes of Brugada, the electrodes are placed one space higher, either in third intercostal space or in a second intercostal space and that will give a very good idea to pick up Brugada and you will have a good changes in V1, V2 and V3. In case of dextrocardia, along with 12 lead ECG, electrodes are placed on right side that is V3R, V4R, V5R and V6R. Or you can put them on V4, V5, V6. So when you put that again, this will be 15 lead ECG. Or all the chest lids right from V1. So left side will become V1R. Right side lead will become V2R and then all on right side what we put will be V3, V4, V5, V6 and this will be the way you can take an ECG in a person in whom you are suspecting dextrocardia.
there are some methods in which we take esophageal lead or epicardial lead or endocardial lead and particularly those endocardial leads are very commonly taken whenever there is a pacing which is being done we also call that as a pacemaker complexes or pacemaker lead we have already mentioned before that in each lead you should have a minimum three complexes and long strips which will should be minimum of 10 seconds which is rhythm strip usually we take lead too long or v2 and while taking all variety of ecgs whether it is a 12 lead ecg or 15 lead ecg or whether it is a pacemaker or it is an esophageal leads or if it is an epicardial lead which is commonly taken during surgery etc lead placement should be proper and the cable which you are using should not have a loose connection or cable should not be broken and at the same time person should not have shivering or involuntary movements or there should be no electrical disturbances in that room because all that will interfere with your ecg tracing this we already mentioned that difference between right arm and left arm is lead one these are called bipolar leads while avr avf and avl are called augmented leads and v1 to v6 are called unipolar leads there are two types of cables which are being available because the coloring code for those cables are little different one is called aha system and another is called i system aha is american heart association system and this is international system which has got color code which is little different in a aha right arm is white left arm is black left leg is red and right leg is green while in case of i system right arm is red left arm is yellow foot is green that is left foot is green and black what is neutral is right foot it hardly makes any difference but while attaching you should be sure you are attaching to the proper leg so right arm lead should be attached to right arm left arm lead should be attached to left right leg and left leg lead should be attached to specific links and while attaching it should not be too tight it should not be too loose cable should not be broken etc all these precautions should be taken so this is ics electrodes these are called aha electrodes where you can see that particular so this is white this is yellow white left arm is black so this should be aha system sorry that this is little different ah this should be on this side sorry this is aha electrode aha electrode should be here on this side so that is right arm left arm red is left leg this is right lower leg so this labeling is little wrong now apart from this you can see here this is right arm is white this is black this is green this is red here right arm is red left arm is yellow right foot is black left foot is green so this will be aha electrode this will be ics electrode as far as placement of chest lead is concerned either you label as v1 v2 v3 to v6 or c1 to c6 attachment remains the same it does not change in a 12 lead 10 electrodes required to produce a 12 lead ecg 
four electrodes are on four limb that is right arm left arm left lower limb right lower limb and six electrodes are placed on the precordium that is v1 to v6 hmm. while taking any cg 12 lids we take what we call as a limb lids that is lid 1 lid 2 lid 3 augmented lid that is avr avf and avl and chest lid that is v1 to v6 and all these lids are taken at least minimum three complexes in each each lids and rhythm strip is also taken and these are the area where you place v1 is placed on the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the sternum v2 is on the left side of the sternum v4 is a fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line while v3 is between v2 and v4 v5 is anterior axillary line in the fifth intercostal space and v6 in is in the mid axillary line fifth intercostal space at the same level of v4 so v4 v5 v6 at the at the same level horizontal level of v4 so that is that placement so v1 and v2 corresponds to the anterior septum v3 v4 is anterior wall and v5 v6 is the lateral wall now this triangle is also called as a ethovian triangle or wilson triangle and when we use placement of v5 we shift v5 to v8 and v6 to v9 this is very commonly taken for posterior wall mi so v5 lead is placed at posterior axillary line uh, sorry not posterior axillary line this will be at a below the scapula that is infra scapula and v9 will be in the fifth intercostal space between v8 and spine will be showing you in the next slide and v7 if we use that will be v4 we will be shifting to v7 and that will be posterior axillary line and we already mentioned that on the right side so v2 will become v1r v1 we will become v2r then v4r is the mid clavicular line on the right side fifth intercostal space and between those two v3 v5 will be anterior axillary line and v6r will be mid axillary line and when we take three extra lids apart from 12 standard lids we call that as a 15 lids like we take v7 v8 and v9 so when we take v7 v8 and v9 it becomes a 15 lid and when you take v4 v5 and v6r on right side either for rvmi or for dextrocardia it becomes a 15 lid ecg so when you take on a right side v1 will become v2r v2 will become v1r and then placing on the right side we already mentioned mid clavicular line on the right side fifth intercostal space v4r anterior axillary line v5r mid axillary line v6r so that becomes 15 lid ecg and this is taken for dextrocardia and rvmi as far as v7 v8 v9 v7 is posterior axillary line on the left side just below the scapula v8 and between the scapula and the spine will be v9 so that will be at the level of v7 or we call it the level of v6 so posterior axillary line tip of the left scapula and left paraspinal region that will be v7 v8 v9 and this three lids are taken for identifying or confirming true posterior wall mi so that is a placement on the left side and this will be on the right side v7r v8r v9r 
So in a 15 lead ECG, apart from 12 lead ECG, standard lead, V5, V6 are separated and then you place them on right side. Sometime even V4, V5, V6 are taken and you place them on V4R, V5R, V6R. So that will be the way. Or you use as V7, V8, V9. So that will be the 15 lead ECG. These are the two separate cables. This will be IES cable and when it is red and yellow, it will be AHA cable. Now 5 lead ECG, 3 lead, they are usually for whenever you use only 3 leads, left arm, right arm, left arm and left foot lead. This is mainly for cardiac monitoring. So while monitoring, either on an ICU or on a monitor, etc., three leads or five leads are being utilized. So that is what is being done during cardiac monitoring. There is something called as a Levy's lead. We'll be talking of that. We'll be coming in next slides. We already mentioned. V7, V8, V9, posterior axillary line, posterior scapular line and left border of the spine. While V3R, that is right side of the lid, V1 will become V2R and V2 will become V1 will become V2R and V2 will become V1R. And then from V3R onwards, you can take on the right side for RVMI or true posterior MI. And you can have other types of leads we call as the esophageal leads. We will be mentioning some of those in further slides. While doing a cardiac monitoring, usually three leads are utilized. So it is called three lead placements. Right arm, left arm and left foot. Right arm is placed close to the right shoulder. Left arm close to the left shoulder. And left lower limb lid is placed on the left side of the sternum, usually in the fifth intercostal space. So that will be the palm. So that is placed on the left side below the pectoral muscle or the lower edge of the left rib cage. So those lid we call RA, LA, and LN. And this will help to monitor bipolar leads that is lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3 and this is very commonly required when you are doing a cardiac monitoring. So these are the lead which will be for cardiac monitoring and this color code is for ICS cable. Then file lead is also utilized for cardiac monitoring but where you have got extra facilities of V1 lead which you can place, if you place on the right side, it becomes V1. If you place on the left side, it will become V2 lead according to the placement of that chest lid. Otherwise, right arm, left arm, right lower limb and left lower limb will be a standard placement. And these are also one method of doing cardiac monitoring. And here, you can see that the, here, that color code, is mainly AHA cable, which is white is for right arm, black is for left arm. So you've got a three electrode system, you've got a five electrode system, all these are mainly for monitoring purpose. Now we'll be talking a little bit regarding a Lewis lead or we call S5 lead. Now this Lewis lead is a modified ECG lead used to detect atrial flutter. Also, it was named as S5 lead. So, if you want to pick up flutter waves during atrial flutter or you want to see the P wave in wide complex tachycardia and you want to also detect is there any AV dissociation, then Levy's lead is very, very useful. Now, where you use right arm lead and it is placed in the second intercostal space on the right border of the sternum. So, this is that right arm. Left arm is placed in a fourth intercostal space 
So left arm lead is placed in the fourth intercostal space on the right side only. That is a second lead. Right lower limb is a neutral lead and should be placed on the right side. Ankle or right lower abdomen that is usually it is placed at the border of the costal margin on the right side. And left lower limb is placed on the left inner ankle either at the lower limb or on the lower part of the abdomen. So these are the four legs. Second intercostal space on the right side, right arm, left arm in the fourth intercostal space on the right side, either on the right foot and this is on the left foot or this is placed close to the costal margin. This will be the costal margin. So you place there. So this is called Lewis lid and or it is mentioned as S file lid and this will give you a very nice recording. This will give you a very nice recording. So right arm, left arm, left foot, where you put that will depend and it is mainly for finding out the flutter waves or for finding out the P waves in wide complex tachycardia or detecting AV dissociation, P wave in AV dissociation. So that is the main use of Levis lid. Then comes what we call is a Brugada lids. Brugada lids means you have to place those lids one space higher up. Instead of fourth intercostal space, you place it in the second intercostal space or in the first intercostal space and then you take the ECG. That will give you little better ECG pattern regarding Brugada. So, in a type 1 Brugada, high lid placements will give you a better ECG pattern and you will be able to pick up that in V1 and V2 by placing them either in the second, third intercostal space or second intercostal space. One space higher up or two space higher up. So, higher the lid, you will have a better interpretation of the ECG complex. So, this is V1 taken at a higher space. This is V2 taken at a higher space. So, that will be the way you can pick up in case of a Brugada. So, these are called lids which are placed one space higher up. Also, one space higher up placement of right V1, V2, even V3, V4 that is for high lateral wall MI. This is the way you can pick up by placing one space higher up. Brugada pattern can be picked up. So you go one space higher up that is in the second intercostal space. You will be able to pick up this pattern. This is in the fourth intercostal space. This is in the third intercostal space. You can see in the second intercostal space now ST elevation cowed ST elevation with T wave inversion is better seen in V1, V2. It is better seen which is not very clear in routine that is in fourth intercostal space. But in third intercostal space you can suspect and in second it is much better clear. And this is the way you can pick up. This is classical Brugada in a standard ECG. Now there is another one we call is arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia or we call ARVD. Now this particular condition is a progressive replacement of the myocardium by fatty tissue in a right ventricle and because of that replacement of the fatty tissue in a right ventricle that becomes fibrotic. It is a fibrofacious tissue, fibro fatty tissue. So there is a scar and that can trigger of ventricular tachycardia. And whenever there is a ventricular tachycardia and it is mainly the right ventricle, so it will give rise to left bundle branch block morphology in ventricular tachycardia. To pick up this particular, because in that ARVD, usually we get what we call is an epsilon wave, which is very well seen in V1, maximum in V2. That is, you have got a little widening of QRS complex. S wave is little delayed. And at the terminal of the S wave, you get a typical wave which is called as an epsilon wave. Hence, it is also called as a post-excitation phenomena. So, characteristics of 
RBMI, are arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia is epsilon wave, which is very, very specific, which you see in a V1 to V3. Very, very occasionally you can see in an inferior lid, that is lid 2. There will be T wave inversion in V1 and V3. QRS will be wide. There will upstroke of the S wave is little prolonged, more than 0.55 milliseconds. That is characteristics and it goes in favor of what we call as ECG pattern in case of an ARVD. We will be showing you further and discussing further. So this is the characteristic of that wave. And that terminal positive deflection is labeled as epsilon wave. A small positive deflection buried in the terminal part of the QRS complex is called epsilon wave. But ARVD is an autosomal dominant inherited disorder. There is a fibrofatty replacement of the right ventricle myocardium. There is a ventricular arrhythmia, particularly in the form of a ventricular premature beat, ventricular tachycardia. And whenever there is a ventricular tachycardia, it will show you an LBBB pattern. Because of this tachyarrhythmias, etc., person is presenting good number of time as a syncope. And good number of time they can have a sudden cardiac death. There will be a very strong family history because it is an autosomal dominant. You can demonstrate an RV involvement by cardiac MRI. And the treatment what they require is to prevent a sudden cardiac death, implantable cardiac defibrillator. And you can see that this particular portion that is from S wave, ascending limb, there is a increased timings. And that is labeled as epsilon wave. And this is called, there is a name given to that. TAD means terminal activation duration. And this terminal activation duration will be prolonged in case of ARVD. It will be more than 0.55 second, millisecond, 0.55 millisecond. Or, sorry, not 0 0.55, 55 millisecond or we we'll label that as a 0.55 second. QRS duration is wider, more than 110 millisecond. T wave will be inverted and you will have this typical epsilon wave. And this V1 will show you RS, R dash pattern. That is RBBB, which can be complete or incomplete. That will be typical pattern. So T wave inversion, prolonged S wave, more than 55 millisecond, which is 95% of the people will show you that T wave inversion will be seen in a 85%. Epsilon wave may be seen in a 30% of the patient. And this will be very classically seen. Prolongation of QR interval, QRS, or QRS will be widened more than 110 millisecond in V1, V2 and V3. Occasionally you may see in a lit 2 that is inferior wall. So epsilon wave is seen in a 30% of the people. T wave inversion in 85%. Prolonged S wave or upstroke is prolonged in 95%. And you will have a widening of QRS complex more than 110 millisecond is a characteristic of ARVD or ARVC or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy or we call dysplasia. And during ventricular tachycardia, it will have left bundle branch block morphology. So, whenever you suspect ARVD or ARVC, symptomatic groups, strong family history, who has got documentation of ARV, ARVD, sudden cardiac death, less than 40 years, person has already undergone ICD implants, etc. So there is a strong family history of ARVD or sudden cardiac death. And prior to taking a part in an athletics competition, screening is done. You should have a 12 lady CG, which should show you. We have already mentioned T wave inversion in V2. Ideally in V1, V2. Precordial lead will show you QR prolongation more than 110 millisecond. S wave upstroke will be more than point, are, 0.55 second or 55 millisecond, and you will have an epsilon wave. 
all these findings together will be in favor of ARVD. And you can go for 24 hours ECG monitoring, which will show you ventricular tachycardia or non sustained ventricular tachycardia on 12 lead recording. Trans thoracic echocardiography will show you RV dimension, that is a dilatation, and RV wall or kinesia. Cardiac MRI will also show you RV dimension, kinetic abnormality and tissue characteristics can be identified by endomyocardial biopsy and you can demonstrate fibrofatty replacement in place of a myocardium by on histopathology and to confirm you can go for genetic investigation to confirm the diagnosis of ARVD. Now there is something called as a fontaine lid. In a fontaine lid, you place a right arm lid over the manubrium sternum, left arm lid at the jiffy sternum or xiphoid process of sternum, and left lower limb lid in a V4 position. That is V4 position. That is a fifth intercostal space in a mid clavicular line on the left side. So these are the three lids which will be placed will show you in that and in that particular lids lid f1 is similar to avf and that will help you to identify epsilon wave it can also help you to identify av dissociation in case of a ventricular tachycardia and it can be also utilized for atrial rhythms and p wave abnormalities can be identified like flutter, etc. So this is a fontaine lids, manubrium sternum, and zephy sternum, right arm, and this is ideally what we call as it corresponds to AVF lid, but this is right arm and left arm, and this is called F1 lid. Between left arm and left lower limb is F2. We don't call lid 1, lid 2, lid 3. This is called F1, F2 and F3. F3 is between RA and LA. And that will give you. So this is F1, F3 and this is F2. Sorry, here it is written F2. So this will be F2, this will be F3. Yes, this will be F3. So this is wrong. Here, this is labeling is wrong. Sorry. This is not proper. So, you take those lids and you will be able to pick up that epsilon wave. And you will see prolongation of QRS complex more than 110 milliseconds. And also the ACE wave is little delayed upstroke more than 55 milliseconds. So you can see better. These are regular lids with regular placement and these are with fontaine lids. F1, F2 and F3 and it can demonstrate a epsilon wave. It will demonstrate the epsilon wave. This is 12 lead ECG with clear cut epsilon wave. So here we don't require fontaine lids. Sometime you can see that epsilon wave in lid 2 also but not common and when this people develops ventricular tachycardia it will be LBBP pattern so you can see the positive wave in V4, V5, V6 and you will see a negative wave in V1, V2 it will be more negative and then in V4, V5, V6 it will be a positive wave that says left bundle branch block pattern so for confirming ARVD history ECG Alter monitoring, ECHO will also show you right ventricle, regional wall motion abnormality, right ventricle will be dilated, there will be changes in the right ventricular wall, cardiac MRI will also help you, then genetic testing can be utilized and then depending upon those criteria, you can use two major criteria, 100% confirm, one major plus two minor will be also in favor of that 
and 4 minor is another. But 2 major is 100% confirmed in favor of ARVD. Risk stratification if a person has got cardiac arrest, VT, age, male sex, cardiac synco, T wave inversion, premature weight, and reduce RV ejection fraction or RV motion. Mainly conservative treatment is exercise restriction as far as drug is concerned, beta blocker, sotelol, or you can use amiodarone or flaconide for ventricular arrhythmias. And to prevent a sudden cardiac death, ICD is the best way of treatment. And even if ICD doesn't work, then ablation. As far as the esophageal lead is concerned, this is mainly taken to look for atrial bit, that is P wave. And you place this esophageal lids at the distance of 15 to 25, 25 to 35, 40 to 50, etc. level at that. And then you take an ECG. So this is a standard ECG and this is the esophageal lid where you will get more prominent of P wave. P wave will become more prominent. You can see here. P wave are better seen. So that will help you to identify the P wave or atrial activity. And this is taken selectively to mainly for left atrium. It will be very good for left atrium because left atrium is posterior. So I end my lecture here. If you feel this lecture is helpful to you, please don't forget to press button like, subscribe, and press a bell icon so you can get a message for the next ECG. In the next ECG, we'll be discussing on what we call as lid reversal, which is also very helpful to you in your everyday practice. This will be also helpful to you in a good number of conditions, particularly for dextrocardia, true posterior MI, 15 lid ECG, ECG monitoring system, 12 lid ECGs, and Levy's lid, Brugada and Fontaine leads. Levy's lead for atrial flutter, AV dissociation, as well as wide QRS complex tachycardia. If you want to look at the P wave, you will take Levy's lead. And in case of ARVD, Fontaine leads. And for Brugada, lead one space or two space higher up, either in third intercostal space or in a second intercostal space. So thank you very much for taking out time. I know that your time is valuable and I appreciate you for spending some of the time with me. Thank you once again. If you have got any suggestion, please don't forget to give your suggestions. I'll try to improve. And your suggestions are always welcome. See you in next lecture.